Hello friends, my name is Dilip Pratap Singh Shakhawat. I have secured All India Rank 72 in Civil Service Examination 2018. My optional subject was Public Administration. Today, I am here to discuss the Preliminary Examination 2019 paper with you. A general overview about the Preliminary Examination which happened a couple of days ago is that the paper has a mix of both some simple questions, some factual questions, as well as some difficult questions also. So, I can categorize it in a moderately tough paper. As compared to the last year's paper in 2018, I think it was on the easier side. The cutoff may rise a few numbers above the last year's cutoff. So now, as we go throughout the paper, I will discuss the sections of economy, geography, and polity. So first of all, we will deal with the questions related to economy. In a general overview, I can say that economics uh, this year was very simple and uh, the questions were very basic. If a person has a command on the basics of the economy, like the very basics which are given in the NCRTs, I think he will do good in this year's examination. Starting with the questions, first we will see third question, uh, we will deal with the economy section and the third question is related to the global competitiveness report and this is often in news and this is a yearly report published by the World Economic Forum. So this is a very simple uh, question and the correct answer is C. Question number 19 is about Atal Innovation Mission and this again was a simple question and uh, the correct answer is C, Niti Aayog and uh, this is relevant because this is often in news and a very good work is being done by the government of India uh, in this domain, in the innovation domain, especially with the Atal Tinkering Labs etc. coming up. Uh, this is again a very significant question and coming from current affairs. Question number 24. Question number 24 is about uh, in official poverty lines are higher in some states. Uh, the reason for this is that price level vary from a state to a state. So, answer for this is going to be B. Question number 37. Among the following, which one is the largest exporter of rice in the world in the last 5 years? Now, the options are China, India, Myanmar and Vietnam. Now, these 4 countries, all the countries are very good producers of rice and they also export. But India has occupied the top position in the last 2015, it occupied the last uh, top position in terms of exports and hence it has remained that retained that spot. So, if we go by the average also, the correct option is B, India. Question number 48. This question is related to the coal sector in India. The first uh, and this is a statement type question and there are three statements given and we have to uh, find out which statements are correct and which are wrong. So, the first statement goes is coal sector was nationalized by the government of India under Indira Gandhi. So, this is a very correct statement and it was nationalized in the year 1970. So, this option is correct. Now, second statement is now coal blocks are allocated on lottery basis. So, this is a completely wrong statement as uh, the coal allocation in India is done on the basis of auctions. The third statement is Till recently, India imported coal to meet the shortages of domestic supply, but now India is self-sufficient in coal production. So, this is completely wrong statement because India is not self-sufficient and we still import a large quantity of uh, coal into India. So, the correct option for this is A, one only. Now, coming to question number 60. As per the Industrial Employment Standing Orders Central Amendment Rules 2018, so this is a very recent current affairs which happened uh, recently uh, one year ago. If rules for fixed term employment are implemented, it becomes easier for the firms, companies to lay off workers. This is a correct statement because if the term of the employee is fixed, suppose it is three months. So, after three months, the owner of the company has the right to fire that worker without any legal consequences. So, this is a correct option. And uh, the second statement is no notice of termination of employment shall be necessary in the case of temporary workmen. So, this again is a very important provision and uh, in under this uh, these order. And the most important thing about this is that in India, the ease of doing business is very important thing which we are focusing upon. And the both the statements are directly being linked to ease of doing business so that the firm operates in a smooth manner. So, in this context also, option C is correct, both 1 and 2 are right and uh, moving forward. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी वन क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी वन अगेन इज अ वेरी ट्रेडिशनल क्वेश्चन एंड द क्वेश्चन इज द सर्विस एरिया अप्रोच वॉज इम्प्लीमेंटेड अंडर द परव्यू ऑफ विच स्कीम सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज बी लीड बैंक स्कीम बिकॉज इट अडॉप्ट सर्विस एरिया अप्रोच एंड इन दिस डिस्ट्रिक्ट इज कंसिडर्ड अ स्पेसिफिक एरिया अंडर विच द बैंक हैज टू लीड द ऑपरेशन इट हैज टू एक्सपैंड द बैंकिंग चैनल इन दैट डिस्ट्रिक्ट सो दिस इज अ वेरी ट्रेडिशनल क्वेश्चन इफ यू गो थ्रू एनी ऑफ द बेसिक बुक्स ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स यू विल फाइंड दिस थिंग इन द इनिशियल चैप्टर इट सेल्फ क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी थ्री कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स मोस्ट ऑफ इंडियाज एक्सटर्नल डेट इज ओड बाई गवर्नमेंट एंटिटीज so this is a completely wrong statement because in india we have a huge private sector and a lot of debt is also in the form of external commercial borrowings so this is wrong secondly all of india's external debt is dominated in us dollar so this is also a wrong statement because most of the debt is denominated in us dollars but not all of it because uh, the debt is in indian rupee also and some of the sdr as well, as well. so the correct option for this question is d neither one nor two question number 64 which of the following is not included in the assets of a commercial bank in india so this again is a very basic question if you know the basics of banking uh, you will easily find out the correct option the correct option is deposits b because the bank has to pay the interest of all the deposits which it has b time deposits or fixed deposits etc so this is again a very simple question and the correct answer is b question number 65 in the context of india which of the following factors is our contributors to reducing the risk of a currency crisis now this again is a very uh, important question from the aspect of current affairs if you are following the current affairs the economy section of the newspaper i think you will be easily able to solve this question the first uh, statement is the foreign currency earnings of india's it sector now see what happens is when rupee loses its value the foreign exchange it comes as a hedge so in this way the first statement is correct because the foreign currency earnings of india's it sector will provide that hedge so that rupee recovers in a efficient manner now again the second statement is wrong because increasing the government expenditure further the government be, will be spending more rupee into the market and with more rupee the rupee will again lose its value so it is counterproductive so second statement is wrong and uh, third again remittances from indians abroad so it is basically forex coming into india so in this one and three statements are correct and the correct option is b question number 67 which of the following is issued by registered foreign portfolio investors to overseas investors who want to be part of the indian stock market without registering themselves directly this again was in news for uh, many years uh, if we see in the past so this is important in the context of people who want to invest in the indian market in the equity specifically but they don't want to get registered with sebi so in this context this was important and the correct option is d that is participatory notes and uh, it is in the short form is very very famous the p notes which uh, is often seen in the newspaper so the correct option is d question number 70 with reference to india's five year plans this again is a very basic question if a person is familiar with the planning system in india which uh, came into being after the uh, after india got independence so that person will be able easily able to solve this question because in this question the statement number 3 is very very significant the statement number 3 is in the fifth five year plan for the first time the financial sector was included as an integral part of the plan this is a wrong statement because it was the third five year plan in which this financial sector was included because at that time Uh, the indira gandhi government it uh, nationalized around 14 banks so this was a wrong statement if we exclude statement number 3 then we are left with only two options that is a or b and in this question as well the correct answer is b because in the first statement it is stated that from the second five year plan there was a determined thrust towards substitution of basic and capital goods industries yes there was a move towards heavy industries but substitution is a too extreme statement and hence this statement is wrong the correct answer is b two only 
क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवेंटी वन विथ रेफरेंस टू द एशियन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन्वेस्टमेंट बैंक दिस अगेन वॉज इन न्यूज मेनी अ टाइम्स एंड बिकॉज इंडिया बींग अ मेजर स्टेक होल्डर हियर एंड दिस डीलिंग विद द वर्ल्ड फाइनेंशियल सिस्टम द ग्लोबल गवर्नेंस एज वेल दिस क्वेश्चन बिकम सिग्निफिकेंट एंड दिस वॉज आस्ट अर्लियर ऑल्सो दो इन अ डिफरेंट कंटेक्स सो वी विल डील विद दिस द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट सी इज ए आई आई बी हैज मोर देन एटी मेम्बर नेशंस सो दिस इज अ करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट इट हैज मोर देन हंड्रेड मेम्बर्स प्रेजेंटली इंडिया इज द लार्जेस्ट स्टेक होल्डर इन ए आई आई बी दिस इज अ रॉन्ग स्टेटमेंट बिकॉज इट इज वेरी क्लियर टू एवरी वन हु इज फॉलोइंग द करंट अफेयर दैट चाइना इज द लार्जेस्ट स्टेक होल्डर इन दिस बैंक सो स्टेटमेंट टू इज रॉन्ग and the statement 3 again uh, is a wrong statement aib does not have any members outside asia so new zealand and australia being the members of the aiib this statement again becomes wrong so the correct answer is a one only question number 72 what was the purpose of inter creditors agreement signed by indian banks and financial institutions recently so this question pertains to the current npa issues we are having in india the non performing assets which are uh, ailing the banking system in india so this was related to that and uh, if we go logically also the correct option is d because it states the aim to foster resolution of stressed assets of 50 crore or above which are under consortium lending so consortium means uh, when a group of uh, financial institutions and banks uh, lend to a particular entity and when that entity defaults on the loan then this comes into picture and this was facilitated because many a times the agreement between the respective banks was not easy to arrive upon so in this way the correct answer is d question number 73 again a very simple question the chairman of public sector banks are selected by the banks board bureau this was a body set up uh, in 2016 and uh, the correct option is a and this is a body banks board bureau which recommends the chairman of the public sector banks and uh, also uh, some of the private sector banks so in this way uh, the correct option is a question number 74 question number 74 is about the petroleum and natural gas regulatory body being the first regulatory body set up in india this statement is not correct the second statement about task of pngrb uh, to ensure the competitive market for gas is correct and third statement also about appeals against the decision of pngrb is also correct so answer for this is going to be b means statement 2 and 3 are correct question number 77 which one of the following is not a sub index of world bank's ease of doing business index so this question again can be solved by the technique of elimination so first of all we have to find that which options are correct so if we see option b paying taxes again a very important component of ease of doing business so this cannot be the right answer registering property again it is a very important part of doing business so this again can't be the right answer and uh, the d option is dealing with construction permits again permit system in india is again uh, in any country for uh, for that matter is very very important if we uh, see in the context of setting up a business so these three are very very logically uh, relating to the ease of doing business so if we eliminate all these three the correct option comes to uh, answer a option a Uh, which is maintenance of law and order which is of uh, though indirectly related but not directly related as uh, compared to the other options so the correct answer is a question number 79 the economic cost of food grains to the food corporation of india is minimum support price and bonus if any paid to the farmers plus the correct option in this is option c because it is including procurement incidentals and distribution cost so this is a very logical uh, answer and uh, in this if we go logically also there are certain procurement costs which comes with the procurement which the fci does throughout the country and again the distribution cost so these th two costs add up to the uh, total cost of the food corporation of india so uh, if you see the other options somewhere they are not fitting so the correct option is c Question number eighty-two: 
consider the following statement this is related to the purchasing power parity so this again is a very basic question related to the economics and uh, the one uh, candidate who is familiar with these basics i think he will be easily able to crack this question uh, purchasing power parity the statement one i am uh, reading the purchasing power parity exchange rates are calculated by comparing the prices of the same basket of goods and services in different countries so this is a very absolutely correct statement and uh, we compare the same basket of goods and services for having that uniformity throughout the world and uh, so this is the parameter by which we go uh, statement number 2 in terms of ppb dollars india is the sixth largest economy in the world this is again an, an incorrect statement because india is the third largest economy when it uh, comes to ppb so the correct option is a one only question number 84 among the agricultural commodities imported by india which one of the following accounts for the highest imports in terms of value so the keyword here is value in the last 5 years so if we talk about value, we can see that spices, fresh fruits and pulses are less valuable than oil, especially vegetable oil. And India, if we know, uh, the government is also considering this thing that uh, the cost of vegetable oil import is uh, continuously increasing and India imports around 70% of its vegetable oil demands by imports. So this again is a very uh, easy question if a person is familiar with what is happening in the current affairs and also if he reads the question very carefully, if he goes to the keyword value, he will be able to find out the right answer. So the correct option is D, vegetable oils. Question number 86, which one of the following is not the most likely measure the government or RBI takes to stop the slide of Indian rupee? So again, as earlier we have seen a question related to Indian rupee. This is again a very simple question. Uh, if you are familiar with the basics of uh, Indian economy, you will be easily able to guess the answer. So the correct answer here is following an expansionary monetary policy. So an expansionary monetary policy will infuse more rupee in the market and this will again be counterproductive. So the correct answer is D. Consider the following statement. So this is, a, this is a question having three statements and we have to find out that which statements are correct. So here the uh, it is related to the uh, storage of payment system data that is popularly known as the data diktat which was recently in use. So the first statement is that they shall ensure the entire data relating to payment systems operated by them are stored in a system only in India. So this is correct and this is in line with the recent data production guidelines uh, which we have and the committee uh, of uh, Sri B and Sri Krishna was also set up in this regard. So the first option is very very logical and correct also. Now going to the second option, they shall ensure that the systems are owned and operated by public sector enterprises. So this is again a very basic thing which everybody must know that in India we have a free market and hence a thing cannot be restricted to the public sector enterprises. So statement 2 is automatically uh, it can be striked out and we are left with statement 3 they shall submit the consolidated system audit report to the controller and auditor general of India by the end of the calendar year. So this again is an incorrect statement. So the correct option is A one only. Question number 88, which of the following adopted a law on data protection and privacy for the citizens known as General Data Protection Regulation in April 2016 and started implementation of it from 25th May 2018? This again is a very simple question. This was always in the news uh, with related to the data protection issue. And uh, in India also we are having uh, a huge study over these guidelines because these were implemented by the European Union and it is also serving uh, as a framework, as a starting point to the law which India will formulate over this. So the correct option is C, the European Union. Question number 90, the money multiplier in an economy increases with which one of the following? So this again is a very fundamental question of Indian economy and the correct answer here is B, increase in the banking habit of the population because money multiplier increases when the money goes to the banking system and when the money goes to the banking system, the bank will be able to lend and it creates a chain. Hence the multiplier effect increases. 
so hence the correct option is b so now we have discussed and analyzed uh, the questions related to indian economy in the prelims paper and my overall analysis is that prelims uh, the economy portion was very very fundamental this time and uh, it was having a good mix of current affairs as well uh, but my tip to the candidates must be that you must focus on the basics the basics are very important in indian economy and always uh, follow the current affairs very diligently and try to link it with the basics so this again will be a very important tip from my side and uh, some of the sources which i would like to suggest to the students who will be preparing for indian economy uh, would be the ncrt's class 11th and 12th and uh, after that you have to read one advanced level book and uh, a good book is ramesh singh uh, for indian economy and furthermore as far as current affairs are concerned economic survey as well as budget forms a very important source for the preparation of indian economy so in this way indian economy can be prepared in a comprehensive manner and now we will discuss uh, we will analyze the geography portion of the prelim examination 2019 and uh, the uh, overall analysis of the geography paper uh, the section of geography is that some very basic fundamental questions were asked especially related to the world geography section since environment and ecology is somewhat also related to geography so combinedly environment and ecology as well as geography how as having more than 20 to 25 questions this time and this was a huge section if a person has command in these areas i think his chances will be uh, very much more than other candidates who are appearing in this examination so in this way we will discuss the geography portion question by question uh, in the following manner Question number eighteen: Which of the following national parks lies completely in the temperate alpine zone? Uh, so the correct option for this question is D, Valley of Flowers National Park, because uh, this national park is located in an altitude range above twenty five hundred meters, and uh, this com completely comes in the alpine region. Another very important option here is the Namdapha National Park, because this is a huge. Uh, national park which is bigger in the area and it has even the altitude above 4000 meters but since the entire national park is not on that altitude in the alpine region so hence the correct option is d valley of flowers national park question number 20 on 21st june the sun now 21st june is the uh, longest day in the entire year so hence this question is significant and also on 21st june we have the international yoga day so this again is very very significant in that matter as well so the correct option here is option a the sun does not set below the horizon at the arctic circle on 21st june every year because at that time the sun is vertically overhead above the tropic of cancer and hence it does not go below the horizon at the arctic circle so this is uh, a very fundamental question of geography and uh, the correct option is a question number 27 which of the following are in agastamala biosphere reserve now see this question is again linked to current affairs because in 2016 agastamala biosphere reserve was included in the man and biosphere program and it was considered as uh, uh, in the unesco list as well so it was included there as the 10th biosphere reserve in india under the unesco's man and biosphere program so this was significant in that matter now it is asking you that which of the following areas fall in this biosphere reserve so the correct option is a that is nayar pepara and shendudurni wildlife sanctuaries so there are three wildlife sanctuaries given over here and kalakad munduthurai tiger reserve so this was a question which has having a mix of both environment as well as uh, geography and also to some extent current affairs as well and uh, in this question the correct way to go forward is that if you are aware about the tiger reserves in india or some of the important wildlife sanctuaries i think this question will be easy to make up and also since we are having other three options also we can also go by elimination so the correct option here is option a question number 33 and uh, this question deals with the percentage of forest cover in the four states which are asked and we have to arrange it in an orderly manner so the options given are chatisgarh madhya pradesh maharashtra and odisha and now we have to arrange them in the order of decreasing forest uh, cover 
as a percentage of the total area of the state in the following manner. So now we will see the different states separately. Now how to go about this question? First of all, since the percentage is asked, so we must know that in a small state, if there is a significant area, the percentage will be more. So here we have the options as Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and Odisha. So here Madhya Pradesh is the largest state among the uh, mentioned states here. So since we know that Madhya Pradesh has the highest forest cover, but when it comes to percentage, Chhattisgarh has more forest cover as a matter of percentage. So Chhattisgarh will be number one. Then we will be having Odisha because it is a significant uh, forest belt in Odisha and uh, it is also having a huge tribal belt as well. So second is Odisha, then we will come to Madhya Pradesh and then Maharashtra. Now Maharashtra again will be having a very less portion of uh, forest cover because of the very fact that it is having some drought prone areas. So this is one area uh, where we can find out Maharashtra and also it is a developed state. It is a urbanized state, many of the towns and cities in Maharashtra are rapidly increasing. Hence the forest cover is not that much as compared to the uh, previous states. So in this way, the correct option will be C, 3, 2, 4, 1. Question number 36, consider the following page. There are a number of C's which are given and uh, then in the next column, there are a number of border countries which are given. Now you have to match the C with the border country. So here also this question has been repeated from the previous year because previous year also Mediterranean Sea was uh, asked two times uh, in the last five years. So this question was significant in that uh, sense. It has directly been derived from the previous year questions. And if we uh, correctly know this exact location and uh, the area of Middle East, if you are familiar with that, that area, we will be easily able to find out. This is a purely mapping question. And the correct option here is B, that is 1, 3 and 4 are correctly matched. Question number 38. Now uh, again a matching question and uh, there are a number of glaciers which are given and the rivers which are given. So here also some of the things, uh, some of the glaciers and rivers are famous and some of the uh, glaciers and rivers are not that much known. So here also we have to use a common sense and uh, in this way we will directly go to the fifth point over here that is Zimu glacier. Now we, if we are aware about the geography of India, Zimu glacier falls in Sikkim and uh, if we have read about uh, the Manas uh, National Park, it falls in the Bhutan region. So the Manas river, it originates from, uh, it, uh, it is a transboundary river between Bhutan and India. So this can be eliminated in that, that way. So if we eliminate option 5, we are left with two options, it, the, our uh, task becomes easier. So Again, in this, uh, the option number 3, if we take, that is an incorrect option and uh, this is definitely a factual question. We must be knowing that. And uh, in this way, the correct option is option number A, 1, 2 and 4. Question number 83. With reference to the cultivation of kharif crops in India in the last 5 years, consider the following statements. Area under rice cultivation is the highest. Area under cultivation of jowar is more than that of oil seeds. The third statement is area of cotton cultivation is more than that of sugarcane. Area under sugarcane cultivation has steadily decreased. Now this question has been derived from the economic survey. If a person is thorough with the economic survey at least of two years, then he will be able to uh, analyze the trend which is happening in the last few years and will be able to solve this question. So here the correct option is option A that is 1 and 3 only because second statement is completely wrong. The cultivation of jowar is more than oil seeds. Oil seed cultivation is widespread in India and it is everywhere in the country but jowar cultivation is there in the uh, more of the semi-arid and arid regions of India. So in this way, we can eliminate this option and come to the answer that is option A, 1 and 3 only. Uh, so we have discussed the questions related to geography. There were around 6 to 7 questions. And uh, if we analyze this year's questions of from coming from geography, we can see there was a good mix of world geography, uh, then fundamentals of physical geography, Indian geography, as well as mapping and uh, there were derivatives related to uh, environment and ecology as well. So in this way, a very comprehensive study is required 
from the geography region you must be very much aware about the fundamentals of physical geography and you must also be very much uh, aware about the mapping section as well both india as well as the world map you must be familiar with the uh, important regions both in the world as well as india again when it comes to india you must be knowing uh, the origins of few rivers few important rivers and then you must be always uh, seeing that which things are news uh, in the in the recent past uh, so that you are able to have that uh, link to the current affairs because it helps you analyze the question in a better manner so in this way my tip to the candidates to prepare the geography section in a very nice manner would be that please uh, read the ncrts of geography specifically class 11th as well as class 12th geography there are two textbooks in class 11th and two textbooks in class 12th i think these four books are the only things which you need to do very diligently repetitively in geography because in these four books the entire geography is covered in a comprehensive manner first of all your fundamentals will be very strong and then you have to supplement it with current affairs for example we have seen a question uh, from economic survey was also asked a question from current affairs was also asked so you have to apply that basic knowledge also so in this way geography can be covered in a nice manner and i will suggest the candidates to have a comprehensive preparation for geography uh, now we will discuss uh, the section of polity uh, related to the preliminary examination which has happened recently the preliminary examination of 2019 and uh, my overview about the polity section is that questions were very basic there were some very simple questions also and compared to the previous years this time twist and turns were very less in the polity section and uh, the tricks the which upsc used to Uh, have it earlier in the polity section and some of the doubtful answers so this is missing in this year's paper it uh, the questions are more specific more straight forward and there are very less confusing questions this year so we will discuss uh, each question separately in the following way now question number 23 this again relates to the geography there are some famous places which are given as well as the rivers around which these places have been set up so we have to match the correct uh, pairs which of the following pairs given above are correctly match and the correct answer is a 1 and 2 only because we know that hampi is situated on the banks of tungabhadra river if a person is familiar with the art and culture uh, and the ancient history of india i think he will be able to uh, get the answer to this question and if we eliminate the option 3 automatically we will uh, be left with only one option that is option a that is 1 and 2 only question number 45 uh, now this question pertains to the constitutional amendment the significant constitutional amendments which have happened in the entire political history of india the first statement is the 44th amendment to the constitution of india introduced an article placing the election of the prime minister under judicial review so this is a wrong statement this happened in the 38th constitution amendment and uh, this again can be uh, analyzed in another manner that 44th constitutional amendment was known as the savior of the constitution and hence such a thing cannot be introduced in the 44th amendment so this was done prior to it in the 38th amendment so this statement is wrong now statement 2 the supreme court of india struck down the 99th amendment to the constitution of india as being violative of the independence of judiciary so this is a correct statement because in 2015 honorable supreme court has struck down the national judicial appointment commission which was set up via the 99th constitutional amendment act so hence that uh, this act itself was declared ultra vires of the constitution and the statement 2 is right the correct option is b 2 only question number 46 consider the following statement now there are four statements which are given and this entire question is related to the removal of judges which happens uh, in the india and uh, which happens according to the provisions of both the constitution as well as the judges inquiry act 1968 so in this uh, the correct option is c 3 and 4 because the first option is completely incorrect because uh, this thing happened in the recent past as well uh, as a attempt was made to send a proposal to the rajya sabha and the chairman of the rajya sabha he rejected that proposal so in this way similar power has been vested with the speaker of the lok sabha as well so this statement is wrong and if we eliminate statement 1 we are left with two options that is b and c and uh, then we have to see 
the force statement now the force statement has the requirement of removal of a judge the special majority which is required in both the houses of the parliament and this is a correct statement because a special majority of uh, a majority of total members of the house and as well as two third of the members who are present as well as voting is required for the removal of a judge and hence this statement is correct so the correct option is c 3 and 4 question number 47 now this is a very straightforward question the ninth schedule was introduced in the constitution of india during the prime ministership of jawaharlal nehru so this is very simple question very straightforward the correct option is option a because at that time ninth schedule was created to put those laws which will be immune from the scrutiny of the honorable supreme court as well as the high courts so in this way the ninth schedule was created because land sealing acts was placed under the schedule so that it survives the scrutiny of the honorable supreme court as well as high courts so the correct option is option a question number 49 now this again is a statement question there, there are three statements which are given the parliament prevention of disqualification act 1959 exempts several posts from the disqualification on the ground of office of profit now this is absolutely right statement second statement is the above mentioned act was amended five times now this is a factual thing which is difficult to determine but again we can take clue from statement number 3 now uh, let us see what it says the term office of profit is well defined in the constitution of india now this again is a very simple statement which is completely wrong because it is not defined the office of profit is not defined in the constitution of india and uh, hence if we eliminate statement 3 automatically we are left with one option that is a 1 and 2 question number 50 under which schedule of the constitution of india can the transfer of a tribal land to private parties for mining be declared null and void so this is again a very simple question that is the fifth schedule is the right answer under that schedule we have these provisions of the transfer of a tribal land to for private purposes so the correct option is option b that is fifth schedule question number 51 now this question is related to the particularly vulnerable tribal groups which are a segment of the tribals in india which are very much vulnerable and some of the tribes are even on the verge of extinction so this was significant in that matter because it was continuously in use because the government is also making some efforts to preserve these tribes so uh, we have four statements here and we have to find out the correct statement so in this question if we directly go to the statement 3 it states that there are 95 pvtgs officially notified in the country so far yes there has been demands of including more tribes into the pvtgs but officially we have only 75 tribes in the country which are registered officially under pvtgs so this statement is absolutely wrong and if we eliminate statement number 3 we are automatically left with option number c which is the correct answer that is 1 2 and 4 statements are correct question number 52 with reference to the constitution of india prohibitions or limitations or provisions contained in ordinary laws cannot act as prohibitions or limitations on the constitutional powers under article 142 now if a person has been uh, following the current affairs uh, he has been reading the newspapers many a times the honorable supreme court has invoked article 142 of the question uh, of the constitution which has which empowers the supreme court to do absolute justice uh, in a particular manner it gives supreme court enormous powers in which it can carry out a certain things by the force of law so the correct option here is option b that is the supreme court of india is not constrained in the exercise of its powers by laws made by the parliament so this is the correct option option b question number 53 with reference to the legislative assembly of a state in india consider the following statements the governor makes a customary address to members of the house at the commencement of the first session of the year so now this is a provision which is very very common sensical in nature because the same provision we have in the lok sabha the parliament of india so it is very very logical that we have it in the states as well because in states also the head of the government the d 
your head of the government is the governor under his name everything is done so the first statement is correct second statement is when a state legislature does not have a rule on a particular matter it follows the lok sabha rule on that matter now this statement is completely incorrect because we have different parts in the constitution and the state legislative assemblies are dealt in a different part and parliament is in a different part and if we don't have a rule pertaining to any of the issues in the state legislative assemblies then we can make a rule for that matter the speaker can make the rule in the light of the constitution so in this manner statement 2 is wrong and the correct option is option a that is one only question number 54 and uh, this question has having four statements related to united nations convention against corruption as well as united nations convention against transnational organized crime so these two conventions has been asked in this question and there are four statements which are given and we have to find out the correct statements so the correct option here is option number c that is 2 and 4 and uh, we arrive at this option because the statement number 1 is completely wrong because united nations convention against corruption doesn't have a provision related to the smuggling of migrants by land sea and air this protocol is included in untoc so this is incorrect now statement 3 is also incorrect because a highlight of the it is states that a highlight of the united nations convention against transnational organized crime is the inclusion of a specific chapter aimed at returning assets to their rightful owners from whom they had been taken illicitly now this provision is there under the uncac that is united nations convention against corruption so these statements have been jumbled up in certain way to confuse the candidates so hence if we read the statements very diligently and if we try to find out the trick which is involved the correct option will be option number c that is 2 and 4 are correct question number 55 consider the following statements now this is a question which is dealing with two of the very important acts in india that first is the indian forest act of 1927 and the next is the forest rights act 2006 which was recently in news due to a number of issues so the correct option here is option number b there are three statements which are given and you have to find out the correct statements the correct option is b 2 and 3 and we can find out the correct option by eliminating the statement number 1 which states as per the recent amendment to the indian forest act 1927 forest dwellers have the right to fell the bamboos grown on forest areas so this right has been given to the forest dwellers but not in the forest areas in the private areas if a person is doing bamboo cultivation that will not be considered as timber anymore so this is a wrong statement the correct option is b 2 and 3 question number 56 which article of the constitution of india safeguards one's right to marry the person of one's choice so now this again is a very good question which the upsc has made and the correct option is option number b article 21 and uh, this observation was made by the honorable supreme court in the hadia case which was uh, there in the news in the past 3 uh, to 4 years so in that context that question has been asked and if we look logically also the article 21 that is the right to life that article pertains to the right to life it is an article which is having a number of provisions which are implicitly there and a number of rights have been provided under this article so i think it is a much safer option it has a broad uh, purview the article 21 and hence the correct answer is b article 21 question number 66 now this question states that which one of the following suggested that the governor should be an eminent person from outside the state and should be a detached figure without intense political links or should not have taken part in politics in the recent past so this is again a very simple question the correct option here is c that is sarkaria commission it is that commission as well as the punchi commission which uh, stated this as a recommendation to the government of india and uh, this is very significant related to the number of issues which are happening in the indian polity related to the office of governor and in that context that question has been asked the correct option is c that is sarkaria commission question number 
when in india which of the following review the independent regulators in sector like telecommunications insurance electricity etc this again is a very good question being set up by the upsc because uh, it has certain trick also and if we have some logic behind us if we know the mandate of the finance commission under the constitution of india we can eliminate finance commission because finance commission does not have uh, the mandate to review the regulators in india so option uh, statement 3 can be eliminated and then we are left with only two option that is a and d and now if we see that uh, if we see the statement number 5 that is niti ayog niti ayog is basically a think tank it does not review the functioning of the independent regulators in india so again we can eliminate option number 5 and the correct answer will be a that is 1 and 2 Question number seventy six. Which of the following statements is are correct regarding the Maternity Benefit Amendment Act two thousand seventeen? Again, this is a question related to the current affairs, and which is an applied aspect of polity into it as well. So the statements here are the first statement states pregnant women are entitled for three months pre delivery and three months post delivery paid leave. So now this statement is wrong. and uh, now moving on to the next statement statement number 2 states that enterprises with creches must allow the mother minimum 6 creche visits daily so this is again a very vague provision and that is not a part of the amendment uh, act third statement is women with two children get reduced entitlement this is an absolutely right statement and uh, hence only statement 3 is correct hence the correct option is c Question number eighty. In the context of any country, which one of the following would be considered as a part of the its social capital? Now, here also it is a very simple question. If you have the concepts very very good, you can uh, easily solve this question. The answer is D. The level of mutual trust and harmony in the society can be summarized in some way as social capital. So the correct option is D. Question number eighty one. with reference to the constitution of india consider the following statement now there are two statements which are given and we have to find out the correct statements the first statement is no high court shall have the jurisdiction to declare any central law to be constitutionally invalid now this is an absolutely wrong statement high courts are constitutional courts created by the constitution of india and those the high courts do have uh, original jurisdiction related to any of the central laws it can scrutinize those laws and it can uh, make a judgment and to and make an amendment in the law or completely strike that law based upon the constitution and the laws prevailing in the country so statement 1 is not right statement number 2 an amendment to the constitution of india cannot be called into question by the supreme court of india this is again a, a very simple uh, guess to be made and uh, statement 2 is completely wrong because in the past also the honorable supreme court has struck down the constitutional amendment acts all together uh, for example the 99th amendment act so this is again a wrong statement hence the correct answer is d neither 1 nor 2 question number 85 now this is a very interesting question and a very debatable question also the question states in the context of polity which one of the following would you accept as the most appropriate definition of liberty so in this question uh, there is a dispute and uh, there are two options which are very very close the option number b which is absence of restraint and option number d that is the opportunity to develop oneself fully and uh, now it completely depends on the upsc what uh, answer it goes for in the answer key which it will release after the examination gets over but uh, as far as my analysis is concerned the correct option should be ans- option number b because it specifically states that in the context of polity now uh, if we see option number c and d they are more related to the human psychological aspect and uh, if we see option number b if we see in the terms of polity then option number b could be the most suitable answer most appropriate answer and uh, but still there is a dispute and uh, i will be going for option number b that is absence of restraint and that is uh, in one way the definition of liberty question number 
Recently, India signed a deal known as Action Plan for Prioritization and Implementation of Cooperation Areas in Nuclear Field with which one of the following countries? Now, this is again a very simple question coming from current affairs. If you are reading the current affairs magazines very diligently, if you are following the newspapers very thoroughly, uh, you will be easily able to uh, recognize the right option. The right option is option number B that is Russia. Uh, so, we have discussed the question related to the polity. This year, the number of questions were less, around 12 to 13 questions were for Indian polity. And uh, my analysis about the polity portion of the prelims paper is that this year the polity was more straightforward. If you are having good knowledge of current affairs and if you are having good knowledge of the constitution and the laws in the country and if you are having a good uh, hold over the important articles of the constitution, I think uh, those candidates will do good in this section of the paper. And uh, going forward, my suggestion to the candidates who want to prepare polity uh, very, very nicely and want to secure maximum marks in the section of polity is that uh, first of all, you must not ignore the NCRTs. Uh, for example, in the questions like liberty, uh, the, question, uh, the NCRTs form a very solid foundation of your knowledge of polity. So in this way, the 11th class NCRT of polity that is Indian constitution of work is the starting point of a preparation for polity that NCRT has to be revised again and again that is a very good uh, book on polity and class 12th NCRT also that deals with the politics of India after independence is again a very significant book because it has uh, certain uh, constitutional amendments which were made uh, after the independence of India and uh, that again is a very important source which has to be referred. So NCRT is class 11th and 12th. Moving on. Uh, M. Lakshmikan's polity has to be followed diligently, thoroughly and repetitively. This is a book which has most of the questions which can be asked in the polity section in all the years of UPSC. This year also most of the questions were directly from that book and that book has to be revised again and again because uh, you have to really be very very sure about every aspect of the constitution, about every law which is there, every important provision. Uh, of the constitution. So, in this way, Lakshmikanth has to be revised again and again. Even if you have read that book 20 times, you have to read it again and again for your another attempt. So, that is one area where you have to work. And then current affairs. I think you have to read the syllabus very properly, both for the prelims and the main examination. And then if any current affairs is getting into that syllabus, you have to note it down because that will ease your preparation. Because if we see the question paper today, we have many questions which were there in the current affairs. For example, uh, that uh, article 21 related to the right to marry. So that was in current affairs. You have to just apply the knowledge of polity and link it with current affairs. So in that way, this section can be dealt uh, very comprehensively and uh, you can get all the questions right in this manner. So this was my tip for the polity section. Uh, all the best to the candidates. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.